Hey guys, Neff here, and today we're taking a look at photo restoration. So we're going to take this picture of my grandfather and we're going to repair it to something like this. Now, it's not the best image in the world, but it's better than what we started off with. So we're going to go ahead and open Photoshop. We're going to do a file open and we're going to open the old image. Now, a couple of notes about this picture is that I did a high quality scan at 300 pixels per inch and I saved it as an uncompressed TIFF file format. What happens here is that I open Camera Raw whenever I try to import it. So all I have to do is do an open image. If you try to do this on your own, on your own images, be sure to do a high quality scan so you have enough information to deal with with image restoration. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my file. First, I need to unlock my file. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click and then I'm gonna right click and duplicate the layer onto itself. Now, if you don't have a mouse button or you're using an old mouse from a Mac, be sure to hit control and then click and then you get your duplicate option on board. So I'm going to use backup image. So I have something to refer back to and then I'm going to have the actual image that I'm going to work on under the layer above. Now, there's a couple of tools we're going to use today. We're going to use the stamp tool. We're going to use the spot healing tool and then the healing brush tool. The difference between these two is that one, I get to direct the texture that I'm referencing and the other one, it's just an automatic reference to the pixels adjacent to whatever it is I'm trying to heal. So let's take a look at each individual one of these tools. So we're gonna start off with the spot healing brush tool. All it does is I'm gonna go over a scar from the paper and it's gonna just detect the pixels around it and try to repair the image like so. Now, sometimes I have too much of a damaged file and I don't know or it doesn't know where to reference from. So uh, in order to direct the brush to know where to grab its reference from, you could do a uh, spot, what was it called? A healing brush tool. And I'm gonna click Alt, and that's gonna be my sample. And then I'm just gonna brush. And it's gonna take that reference from that point that I've referenced from. You see what's happening here? So I'm taking the sample, and I'm going over. Okay, and you just got to be very careful and just take your time with it. Don't rush it because if you rush it, it's not going to look as good. Okay. And then the last tool we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at the stamp tool. What happens is that sometimes we'll have a scar that's too big to reference from. And so we're going to have to just clone a number of pictures and just place it on top. So I have already done this and I know from experience that this this little scar tissue right here is um, a little too gray. It's an it's in a border area, and so it, when the spot healing tool comes to this area, it just blurs the hell out of it. And so, in order to get a precise sample of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the stamp tool. I'm gonna click Alt to reference it, and then I'm gonna go over wherever it is I want to clone over and then just kind of get rid of that texture. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this right here. Now, if you mess up, that's okay. You could always go back, but I'm just gonna go over it like so. You wanna try to grab as much texture as you can from the nearby uh, pixels, just to make sure that you have the most accurate sample as far as lighting and shading is concerned and texture as well okay so one more tool before i do a high speed edit on this because nobody wants to watch me edit this for like an hour we're gonna go over the content aware tool that has been present in adobe photoshop since i think cs5 what i'm gonna do is use the polygon lasso tool and i'm gonna go over areas where I am missing bits of pictures. And what this does, it, it's a little bit like the spot healing tool, except it looks around the adjacent textures and the adjacent color and fills in that spot. So all I did was do the polygon lasso tool, go over my area, right click and do a fill. 
and then it's going to use content aware it's going to look nearby for a texture and it's going to automatically fill that space now be careful when doing this with large file formats because it will eat up your ram and you'll run out of ram and it's just going to corrupt the file also be sure to save along your progress so i'm going to do this for this corner as well and there you go okay and now i'm going to fast forward enjoy and then we'll we'll do a summary at the end of this so bear with me Okay, a couple of notes here about the spot healing tool. The spot healing tool works better if you use it in small doses. So don't try to recover large chunks of data with the spot healing tool. Just a little bit at a time, take your time with it and don't, don't try to rush it because your results will not be as good as you want them to be so aside from that you're gonna get to a point where it's like i can't really do much more anymore and it's just gonna you start creating data you should start making stuff up so what i'm gonna do is if you noticed about towards the beginning of my video i did create the edges of this image and so i'm gonna go ahead and crop that out and I'm gonna crop this side out and just a little bit of the edges just to make sure that I don't have any fake data in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the check mark and apply. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply a, a black and white adjustment layer and turn this image completely black and white. And that's gonna come in handy for my next tutorial which talks about colorization of black and white images. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this image. I'm gonna save two versions of this. So I'm gonna save this as assignment four underscore name underscore version one. And that's vital for this project in particular because there's gonna be two versions of this, of this project. So I'm gonna save a Photoshop file that's a PSD. And I'm also gonna save a JPEG image version of this 
file just to make sure that I have a JPEG image file to turn in to my Google Classroom. And I'm gonna click OK and that's about it for this tutorial. Now take your time on the image, don't rush it. The more you rush it, the less uh, quality of work you're gonna get. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if those of you who are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.